Hey guys, welcome back to another video, Shaman J. So, smartphone update, smartphoneconversations.com. That's the plug. Hit that up to see the latest post. Uh, but today we're going to be kind of talking about what you actually need versus what you what you desire and what you want. Now, smartphones have obviously come a very long way, uh, and this has been uh, tested over and over again by a lot of different creators, myself included. Uh, I know that I don't need certain things in a device, and that it's simply just a want. Now, this rule can actually apply to your entire life, down to the car you drive. Some people have used that example on me before. Like, Jay, well, you don't need a Hellcat, but you drive uh, this car, and you know, I get it, I get it. It's about the daily commute, I understand. But with smartphones, it's a little different. Uh, a car could actually appreciate uh, in value, and most cell phones depreciate extremely quickly. I mean, as soon as you purchase them, they have lost value, depending on which smartphone it is. So uh, by today's standards, a phone like, and I have like 10 phones on my desk, I always have a lot of them close by. My latest purchase is the OnePlus Nord uh, N20. Uh, that is a device that can can suit so many people uh it's incredible but in fact you know one of my main da daily drivers uh is the oneplus 10 pro now for me as a creator the reason this phone might be more something that i need uh it could come down to creation if I wanted to use this device simply to create content on the channel, I definitely could. Could I edit and create content with the OnePlus Nord N20 5G? Of course I could. But then I would have some limitations on what I'm actually doing, i.e. no 4K recording, uh, 1080p 30 only, uh, front and rear, uh, you know, batteries better, obviously, but just some things are simply limited on devices that cost less. Now, this is a trick of the trade from people who want to make money, you know, so they get us to believing that we actually need the OnePlus 10 Pro, when in fact, I've always told you on this channel, companies will always give you an out. Uh, and that out for a lot of people is the lower priced versions of some devices uh, from the same company. Samsung is a great company for doing this. They actually have and, and Motorola as well. They actually have some, uh, Samsung has some very expensive devices out there. Uh, and then, i.e. the, uh, where's my S22 Ultra, very expensive device. Uh, but in fact, you don't have to settle for that. You don't have to spend that money. Uh, you could actually just grab a, a series line from them and they go all the way down to 99 bucks most of the time. So um, there's always an out from a company and I, I practice this frequently because I truly believe that a lot of the things are just not necessary for, and I, I hate to use the, the terminology average consumer, but there is such thing as a regular or average consumer. And a lot of, uh, by today's standards, from what I can see, the high end versus mid range, mid tier, low tier, those really don't matter anymore. Uh, the same things apply today that it did in, in the past, which was price, how much something costs might determine or dictate how the person is going to shop. I personally feel like you should always be looking at price. You should not want to spend a ton of money on a device just because you just want it. Uh, it rules out what you actually need. Now, you can circle your needs by today's standards. They are very simple. Twitter, Instagram, uh, what is it, TikTok, uh, any other any other kind of social media platform, uh, YouTube, uh, just all these things. By today's standards, that all ages, folks, I have seen all ages on these platforms. So if, if that be the case, then you're going to need a, uh, a phone that can actually do these tasks which is pretty much all of the phones by today's standards. If a phone doesn't have an app store by, by now, uh, you even have the ability to use web apps. So it's, it, it operates the same. Uh, you can post and you know do everything the same, but you're gonna need a phone or device that can do those things. So every phone today can pretty much, you can download all the main social media apps and enjoy them. Now, when you're using these social media apps, you're gonna need a good camera. And again, you have companies like Motorola, LG, and pretty much all phones today have it, at least good cameras. Like one of the cameras on the device is going to be at least good. Uh, and I just think that's fair to say, even phones that you find at the $100 price range 
some of them are really, really good. And I, I mean, it's it's worth it to stick with those. But but if you're just using it for social media, certain applications, I guess that is the thing. But if in fact you need more than that, then eh, you're going to shuffle on to something else that might be a little bit more powerful and spend a little bit more money. But again, today's world is simply social media and cameras. Uh, and for people who have like dedicated camera channels, my, my Grant S comes to mind immediately when I think of a person who runs a channel. And the first thing they do is they don't, you know, he doesn't normally unbox a device and do a detailed walkthrough. His content goes straight to comparison. He may do a quick short and show you that he has the device, but ultimately he goes straight to cameras because he th that's today's market cameras people are set on just figuring out if a camera is good and you know that's just the way it is so there are a ton of devices out there that can actually produce good footage good enough for social media platforms and they don't cost a lot now what's the trade-off because there's there's a lot of phones out there like i just said that they at least have one good camera on them uh but the trade-off might be that it's not as powerful. It, it, it doesn't look good. So you think of whatever you want to think of for, for a trade-off. Uh, it might have poor battery. It could be anything. But there's going to be some kind of trade-off if you have a, a device using it for, for just one. It's strong in an area. Uh, uh, very seldom do you find a device that's pretty much strong in every area that costs less than four or 500 bucks. It, it's, it's hard to... They may be out there. I'm not saying it's impossible, but... Uh, very rare that you'll find a device that can impress a large number of people that that covers uh, just a mass group of people like and it doesn't cost 500 bucks or 400 bucks. That is a hard one to, to, to try to pick through. So uh, slim pickings there. But I will say if you're willing to bend in some areas, um, software or hardware, hardware probably being the main one. Uh, you, you might be able to get around and save a ton of money on to, to meet your your today's standards, which is to me, folks, from what I've learned, it's just social media. So many people uh, are, are so involved with social media that they that they're they're buying. They might buy their device based on if the cameras are good. I've, I've actually spoken to people uh, and. They they solely just wanted to know about the cameras on the device. They didn't really care much about anything else on the device. They just wanted to make sure those cameras were legit, and then they were good to go. They they had little interest in you know the, whether it was a iPhone or an Android or whatever. They just wanted to know is the software is the camera going to be good? Can I do this with the camera? Can let me take this photo to see if it's gonna it's gonna look good enough for me? So I'm surprised at the shift that we have in our social media age when it comes to um, being in, in today's world, when it comes to smartphones and things like that. Because I remember at some point um, I, I would take, uh, I would do a camera review and a lot of the men, men, it was probably men saying, I don't do selfies. I don't even care about the cameras. Now, fast forward to today. And then a lot of it is is following. You know, a lot of people are following what they see online. They're not really experiencing it for themselves, but that that is a lot to it. Um, but now you fast forward to today, you see more men posting selfies and stuff like that than you do women sometimes. Uh, whatever whatever they identify as, you know, you you see a lot of men posting selfies and stuff like that. So um, I, I do post selfies, but it's strictly to produce the footage from a device that I'm using. I normally, you, you won't believe this, but you could ask my wife, I, I don't even like to take photos. Um, but, you know, obviously when you're creating memories with your family, you're going to have to take some photos. But I'm personally not a fan of taking photos of myself or uh, I'd rather take photos of things, the beautiful trees, the, 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 the berries on the tree, the land, the lawn, it could be anything, uh, the water. I don't like to take selfies. I don't like to take photos of myself. So when you see those, just know <laughs> some people are like, man, why don't you smile? I'm like, I am smiling. You know what I mean? I, I, this is the, this is what you get from a person who generally does not like to take selfies. Uh, and it's not for any kind of personal insecurities or anything like that. I just don't like taking photos of myself. Now, obviously, I get in get in photos with other people, obviously, family again, things like that. I don't care about that. But just sitting around taking photos of myself all day. I don't see the point of that. 
Uh, unless I'm trying to show you something on a device, you know what I mean? Like, that's the only reason I'm going to be taking this photo. So um, I, I feel like uh, by today's standards, I put out a video a, a while back and, I, and, and it was kind of titled, the industry will, the OEMs and industry will never give you what you want. They won't do it because if they do that, they're out of business. Something as simple as having a sinus medication, it just won't go away because they're going to lose money and they're going to go out of business. Shareholders will be depressed. Everyone loses money and the game's over. So when it comes to smartphones, we're going to see these incremental pauses and upgrades and they're going to act like companies act like they just couldn't figure this out. Oh, my gosh, we now have a hundred megapixel. And it, and it seems that um, a lot of companies are using the number scale to win you over that they're they're using a number or tr just a traditional next number up and they got you that that that's that's what's happening the next number boom got them th and that's all that it is there's nothing more to it so they get you to believe that the 9 is better than the 10 because it's up the scale next it's just a way to get your get your attention again and to keep you buying into the to the to the source that's that's all it is so when I look at cell phones and I tell people, man, I still carry a flip phone a lot of times. Um, they just look at me like I'm crazy. Like, what? You're going to miss your email. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to check that email. I don't I don't I don't have to check that email because I don't want to be bothered when I when I vacation. And folks, let me tell you, I vacation way more than you could possibly believe. Um, I don't I, I, I sometimes I don't like to post too much of my post too much of my personal life. Because it's my personal life. And so I'm giving you tech, tech news, tech information, tech talk, whatever. I'm giving it all about tech and products and stuff like that. And you really shouldn't be too interested in what I'm doing in my personal life. But sometimes I'll post footage using devices. Uh, one of my latest videos was a, is a blind camera test with three phones. And you know, obviously you could see I was vacationing again. I was on the beach in Florida. Uh, and, you know, I'm just, I, I, I prefer to use the devices in that map. That's where I get the excitement from using the devices. But a lot of times, man, um, what we see online with, with taking photos with certain devices is there's going to be a dominant force. Some people truly believe that the iPhone 13 Pro Max or the iPhone devices are the best. Some people believe that Samsung phones are the best. Whatever you believe, LG, whatever you believe is what you believe. But I know that if a person just creased a little bit, bend a little bit in some areas, you could save a lot of money and you wouldn't have to buy into the 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Do we, are we, how long are we going to see the iPhone 13, or actually iPhone 14 Pro Max, the iPhone 15, the iPhone 16, 17? It's like these companies, and I'm not just picking on that particular company, but that's what they're doing. They're adding a number on then slowly giving some changes. And one here, one here, one here. It's 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 just a way to keep you involved in spending money. And while I do agree, it's your money. You spend it how you want to spend it. But here, I like to keep some people informed who may not know. Let me tell you something. Some of my number one videos, the videos that got the most attention, are from like my flip phones or phones that cost under three or four hundred dollars. Those videos get a lot of attention because. The real world is like phones that are under four hundred dollars or so get a lot of attention. They get more interaction over time than a video phones that I purchased that cost seventeen hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars, eighteen hundred. They they just don't. A thousand dollars. People are the techies seem to be a little bit more involved with those videos, but uh, a lot of people just aren't interested in phones that cost above three or four hundred dollars. And flip phones are very popular, folks. Contrary to what you believe, go to your carrier and they will all have a flip phone. Every carrier pretty much has a flip phone because there is a market for them. It's a way to save money. It's a way to get good battery life. And now flip phones have access to social media. Like my latest flip phone that I got, the blue one on T-Mobile, it has access to Twitter, the web browser. It's 4G, 5G or whatever. It's pretty much a flip smartphone. Uh, but it's and it's so crazy that the flip smartphone uh, lost traction, you know, like the razors is cool and everything. But Samsung brings out a flip smartphone, but it's expensive. It's not in the reach of a lot of people unless they finance it or unless they pay monthly or put it on a credit card. 
companies want you to do that. Everyone's getting a piece of that puzzle right there and getting a piece of that pie and they're getting a slice. So the, the game is to keep you spending, obviously. But when you don't spend, they don't win. So if think about here, here's what an ideal smartphone probably could be for me. Um, and I've, I've, I've been over this a bunch of times, you know, but it's more of a it's obviously personal preference. So if you're considering an ideal smartphone or something that someone thinks is great to them, it's not going to be ideal for everybody. So first of all, the ideal smartphone will have to have the battery capacity, like the, the battery life of a regular old flip phone. And that alone, because uh, flip phones last sometimes for like two weeks, you can go a whole week. You can carry a flip phone uh, and, and not, um, even even bother with checking email. You, you you don't have to. Uh, you could check your certain things on there, but you won't bother with checking for a charger at all. You you just don't. You just forget about it. And it's compact. It can go in any pocket. If you drop it, you don't care. I, I mean, just think about this. I have a flip phone that I have. Where I cracked the little small outer display. I didn't care. Okay, I just flipped it open. And I have another display. So getting to a point where you you're getting stellar battery like you do on flip phones. That won't happen anytime soon. And, and, and so the OEMs will bring out a smartphone that's a flip phone. Uh, and the leading smartphone that's a flip phone right now has to be the Z Flip 3. I think that's one of the best hands down flipping smartphones of them all. Some people put that phone down because they say it has poor battery. But you have to remember, battery life depends on the person using the device and how you're using it. Now, some people, they stay on their phone like all day. They just have their phone in their hand all freaking day. It's like they don't have a life. <laughs> That's all they know. Or it might be a young person who's in high school or whatever, and they just can constantly on their phone or whatever. But I didn't have any problems with my Z Flip, either one of them. I uh, had, had no problems whatsoever. The Z Flip 3 definitely is, is fantastic. And I'm hoping the 4 has... Uh, better battery is talking about a, a battery bump on that device and that's fine i definitely want it uh because i'm smartphoneconversations.com that's the plug check it out I, why wouldn't i want it you know what i mean so um but in in the ideal smartphone uh and and, and remember i have videos out talking about like the perfect smartphone and again back to uh, relating to that video they're never going to make what we want them to make they go out of business. So you have to find a way to navigate the world in smartphones and continuously get what you want. Now, I will admit I'm on the creator side. I'm a regular person, but I'm also on the creator side. So I have somewhat of an advantage because I get revenue to keep purchasing all these phones. And so after a while, I can just sell them off and after I buy them and get my money back pretty much. They'll pay for themselves. Pretty much every device that I bring on the channel pays for itself within a month. Um, you know, the, the revenue is high enough to where, okay, I can just cash out. You know, it's like I bake, I know when I pay cash for this, like I pay cash for the one plus, um, 10 pro, not on my credit card. Like I debit swipe it's mine. Um, because I mean, obviously I will give a class on credit, but that's not what my channel is about, but I am for promoting positive interactions with your credit. So uh, privately, if you wanted some tips on your credit to get it up where it needs to be, I could definitely help you out because, I pride myself on having good credit and using my credit for areas that I think it should be used for and then keeping it above eight at all costs. So, but back to smartphones, you know, they, they paying for something as a creator, you ultimately know you're going to get your money back depending on if that content you put out behind that device blows enough interest out into the world of, of smartphones and people watch you. Because people don't have to watch you, uh, but you know, if, if you're putting out something that's interesting, again, like my, some of my best videos are on flip phones. It's so strange, not just flip phones, but just phones that cost pennies on the dollar by today's standards. You know, they're not very high end, and there's so many people that are so thankful that they had a walkthrough of a ZTE whatever phone was. It was a it was a smartphone, but it was like twenty nine dollars, and so many people were so excited about that video. And then the, again, all the flip phones that I've done have done immaculate. Now you can't, as a creator, you don't want to look at your views and think you're going to get paid off of how many views are on the, on that. Cause it's, it's so much more than that, but you, you want to be able to get something as a creator and have it pay for itself. Now back to regular consumer talk, 
flip phones is is I would love to and remember the first not the first razors remember those razors it was like the razor nine or something it was still a flip phone with no touchscreen but it was bigger it had like a three inch or bigger display on it whatever I'm going Pac Man on you know what I'm saying but remember those that would be a great smartphone for me with 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 a Snapdragon eight fifty five in it or something like that no touchscreen. But a bigger display like that, basically with no touchscreen, I would be okay with that. It could have a keypad at the bottom. It could have a full, basically a folding BlackBerry. You know what I mean? Remember the folding BlackBerry? Basically that, the folding BlackBerry, that was phenomenal, but it didn't go anywhere. The folding BlackBerry had a full keyboard and it had a touch, but you know, I was more interested in the full keyboard. And the bad part, it was only available on Sprint. So if you look that up now, it's a wrap. You, you know, those are like collector's items, and people are charging out the yin yang for them. And then if they're not charging out the yin yang for them, they're not new, they're a little beat up. Uh, but nonetheless, um, that folding Blackberry, I could take a regular style device that folds in half with a nice three or four inch display on the top portion with a nice huge battery on the bottom. It doesn't have to be thin. Uh, but if it folds and has a full keyboard, I can that way I can bang out emails and stuff like that nicely. You know what I mean? Like, give me Android on a folding device with a keyboard, a full QWERTY keyboard that's not too cramped, and I will be okay. I wouldn't have to. Obviously, the cameras are going to have to be on par. I need at least 4K 30, you know what I mean? But um, everybody's needs and wants are different because when I am vacationing, I don't want to be bothered. Um, sometimes I'm at a place where there is no service and I intentionally do that because I don't want to be bothered with YouTube. I don't want to be bothered with social media. I want to be out at my cabin and I want to be around my family and I want to be in the hot tub. I want to go to the beach. I want to do all these things that you do to have fun with your family to escape from because being retired or whatever and you know also doing work with the church and just all these different things. YouTube is the only real stressor that I have, really, you know, like when it comes to like any kind of work, because <laughs> I don't I don't consider this work because, again, I told you when I feel like it's getting really hard work, I'm done because I don't I'm still independent on here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't I'm not a part of any social media network. And there's a lot of creators that are. They just won't admit it. But um, but that's their choice, though. Fine. You, you do it. But. I don't answer to anyone. I literally answer to no one. The only people I answer to with this channel is the people who watch and then the OEMs who want to negotiate a deal on a product. That's pretty much it. And most of the time I'm saying, no, no thanks. Or I just ignore it. So that's the advantages of being where I'm at in my YouTube space. The freedom. I don't need a million subs because I'm still having fun. And if I'm being honest, if you follow my channel, um, I know how to manage money. So I'm, I'm, this is lucrative to me because I'm in the, I've been in the black for a long time. I was only in the red once with YouTube and I decided years ago, I won't do that again. Talk to creators who have been in the red for more than a year or two. They hate it. They, they don't like it and they find a way to get out. But anyway, finding a, your ideal smartphone is, it's just, there are some people who are holding their ideal smartphone. Let's be clear. There are people out there. I, I'm a creator, so I have well, creating on YouTube is something that I like to do. So I'm gonna be more involved. Like I, I could go to events and stuff like that, or um, I, I got my hands in some of everything. I have so many. It's, look, as I look right now, I have two exclusive items sitting right here that I won't be able to show because of embargo. I, that excites me to be able to get things in advance. I'm not getting paid or anything for this stuff. Anytime I get paid for some kind of review. Uh, I put the little pop up on there, paid for this products, but not paid for the review. So I think the ideal smartphone, once again, if when I stay on that conversation for just a moment, is strictly just whatever is going to be beneficial to you to make your life more productive. And, and so you don't work hard and you, you have an easy run with this device, whatever it is. Some people feel like that's the Z Fold 3. While I agree, the Z Fold 3 is a phenomenal device. The hardware needs to be different at this point. I'm looking for something a, a little bit more shorter, kind of along the lines of the Oppo. But Google's next device is probably going to look something like that as far as size goes. And I'm hearing rumors that the new uh, Z Fold 4 is going to be small like that. But I can confirm, folks, the Z Fold 4, if, based on what I have right now, uh, because I got an exclusive look at the Z Fold 4. 
uh, and it it's it's I don't see it being any different in hardware. But nonetheless, I won't spoil too much. But again, your your ideal um, your ideal smartphone, you might be holding it already, and that's okay. But as as a person from where I sit, I have the I have the pleasure of having purchased all these devices and gotten some at no cost. And so I have a different way of thinking and I'm ex- I'm holding the OEMs at a different level than you might be. So I, my number one thing for smartphones is batteries. I need the phone to be able to last. You should want that too. You should want a phone that has a huge battery. Now, even if battery is not number one for you, it's got to be at least number two. Because, okay, so we want a good performing device, okay? Cameras shouldn't be at the top of your list. Uh, but battery and performance, they should be fighting over number one, at least from where I sit. Based on my experience of having all different kinds of smartphones that don't have, some have the highest end processor and some don't have the highest end processor. Based on my experience and all the, the going on 17 years of being on YouTube, yeah, I think I kind of know what I'm talking about. Just a, I'm just learning. I'm still learning. But I think I got a leg up on some people, the average consumer at least. So I don't want to go too long. I've probably been going for like 20, 30 minutes. I'm not even sure. But nonetheless, we're going to cut here. And I want to get your thoughts on what you need versus what you want. How much is the timer? How much, what's the timer on? Let me see. Yeah, I'm coming up on 30 minutes. Yes, I had to put my bifocals on. Stop. Don't hate. But what you want versus what you need in the smartphone world, how, why have you not figured it out yet? Why are you still financing a phone that you would not pay cash for? There's someone out there doing that. And I just want to know. It's not that you're doing something right or wrong. I just want to know why live a certain way when you really don't have to. Because uh, it's, it's, it's already a known fact that a lot of people live outside of their budget, not just with smartphones, just in general. But when we're talking about smartphones, why are you financing the phone that you probably wouldn't pay cash for? Or why are you financing that phone with all these features that you don't use? It's your man, Jay. I hope you guys enjoyed today's discussion, folks. And I will see you guys in the next one. It is Friday at the recording of this video. So I hope you guys have a good weekend whenever you're watching. Take care.